hi everyone welcome back to the channel once again in this video we are going to learn about hemoptysis i am starting this new series on this channel that is read harrison with me in which i will make videos based on harrison and will cover all the important aspect of the chapters so let's begin hemoptysis is expectoration of blood from respiratory cavity that is the source of blood is respiratory tract it is considered massive or life threatening if the amount is more than 400 ml in 24 hours or more than 150 ml at one time now let us learn about anatomical and physiological aspect of hemoptysis as i have already told the hemoptysis can arise from anywhere in the respiratory tract from glottis to alveolus the most common site is bronchi or medium sized airways lungs have a unique anatomy and physiology as it has got dual blood supply from pulmonary circulation and from bronchial circulation the pulmonary circulation is a low pressure system and it is essential for gases exchange at alveolar level the bronchial circulation is a high pressure system as it arises from aorta directly and it supplies airways it is a part of neovascularization of tumors it supplies dilated airways of bronchiectasis and cavitary lesions so as the bronchial circulation is a high pressure system most often the cause of massive hemoptysis is this bronchial circulation only now let us talk about the etiology hemoptysis has got major three causes that is infection malignancy and vascular diseases in usa most common causes are viral bronchitis bronchiectasis and malignancy while in rest part of the world most common causes infection that is tuberculosis now let us learn about some of the important characteristics of infections first of all viral bronchitis it is associated with blood thin sputum and often have a small volume hemoptysis in chronic bronchitis due to recurrent and super infection there is increased airway inflammation and which can lead to bleeding while the bronchiectasis is associated with hemoptysis during exacerbations in bronchiectasis due to recurrent infections there are dilated and inflamed airways as you can see here and whenever it involves bronchial circulation which is highly vascular there is massive hemoptysis and often death can also occur talking about most important infection that is tuberculosis tuberculosis is associated with hemoptysis in two forms either it can be due to cavitary disease or it can be due to rasmussen aneurysm although it is rare rasmussen aneurysm is a pulmonary artery aneurysm and what happens is basically when it get eroded it bleeds into a cavity other infections like nocardia and non tuberculous mycobacterium they also form cavitary lesion and then cause hemoptysis the aspergillus is often associated with formation of mycetoma and which actually formed inside the cavity and then it bleeds the conditions like pulmonary abscess and necrotizing pneumonia they are associated with devitalizing lung parenchyma and which leads to hemoptysis the common organism involved in this are staphylococcus aureus klebsiella pneumoniae and other oral anaerobes paragonemiasis is a parasitic infection it is a kind of lung fluke and it also mimics tuberculosis it occurs due to ingestion of crayfish as you can see here and uh, it is uh, common in southeast asia and china so immigrants from this place whenever they complain of hemoptysis this should be a differential diagnosis talking about the vascular causes first of all cardiac disease cardiac disease is associated with hemoptysis in form of pulmonary edema it has got a characteristic feature of pink and frothy sputum but often due to use of antiplatelets and anticoagulant it can associated with frank hemoptysis other causes pulmonary embolism pulmonary embolism as such do not cause hemoptysis but when it is associated with parenchymal infarction then it can cause hemoptysis then there comes av malformation it is due to ectatic vessel in the airways and autobronchial fistulas then comes a very important point that is diffuse alveolar hemorrhage although diffuse alveolar hemorrhage is associated with significant bleeding into the lung parenchyma but often it is not associated with hemoptysis causes of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage are systemic lupus erythematosus which is associated with immune mediated capillaritis other causes are toxicity from cocaine and other inhalant stem cell transplant diffuse alveolar hemorrhage is also part of pulmonary renal syndrome that is caused by granulomatosis with polyangiitis and nt gbm diseases and it is associated with hemoptysis plus hematuria but can also present with either one of these 
and the last and new cause is vaping induced lung injury the third cause that is malignancy malignancy is associated with uh, hemoptysis whenever the tumor invades the airways hence hemoptysis is malignancy signifies that the airway has been involved the bronchogenic carcinoma can be associated with massive or non massive hemoptysis carcinoid tumor in many patient hemoptysis can be the presenting symptom of carcinoid tumor the uh, carcinomas like small cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas they are basically central in nature and hence erode the main pulmonary vessels and can cause massive hemoptysis other than that pulmonary metastasis and kaposi sarcoma in aids patient can also cause hemoptysis other causes of hemoptysis are catamenial hemoptysis which is basically associated with pulmonary endometriosis and and leads to cyclical bleeding then foreign body aspiration diagnostic and therapeutic processes thrombocytopenia and coagulopathies and antiplatelet and anticoagulant therapy now let us move ahead with the evaluation and management part this slides looks little busy as i have included many points here but just follow me and it will be easy now first of all patients of uh, hemoptysis are at risk of death due to asphyxiation that is the blood filling the airways and spaces which leads to asphyxia and then death now whenever a patient of hemoptysis comes to you the first and important part is history and physical examination history can give us a clue for the cause of hemoptysis like if patient gives history of fever chills and cough then it is associated with some infection if patient has a history of smoking and has weight loss then we can think of malignancy if patient gives history of inhalation exposure or vaping then we can think of a direct lung injury due to this and if the patient gives a pre existing history of pulmonary disease then it can also be helpful in physical examination we have to look for hypoxia tachycardia hemodynamic instability we have to examine the nasal and oral cavity look for clubbing and wheezing also auscultate the patient to look for any added sounds examine the skin and mucosa and look for ecchymosis and petechiae as in coagulopathies it can be involved and also look for telangiectasia so history and physical examination makes a very important part of approach now we have to quantify the amount of bleeding as it is very important for the next step as i already told you if the bleed is more than 400 ml in 24 hours then it is considered massive and life threatening bleeding and the approach is different from that of non massive now patient will not tell you the amount of bleed in ml we have to ask him in cup according to the us standard one cup equals to 236 ml if the patient falls in non massive category then we have to look for risk factors if there is no risk factor that means patient has some acute disease like infection and we have to treat that infection if there are some risk factors like smoking weight loss inhalation or exposure then we have to further proceed to for evaluation we have to do x ray chest complete blood count urine analysis creatinine coagulation studies and all if this fails to give us the clue then we move ahead with ct scan and bronchoscopy once we get the cause of the hemoptysis then we have to move ahead with the treatment while in case of massive hemoptysis there are three simultaneous goal first is to protect the non bleeding lung second is to locate the site of bleed and third is to control the bleeding protecting airways and non bleeding lung is an important step we need to first position the patient so that the bleeding lung is downwards and because of gravitational force the bleeding will not go into the non bleeding lung we have to avoid the endotracheal intubation unless it is very necessary because cough which is a natural reflex is very much effective in removing the blood and clot than suctioning if a patient requires endotracheal intubation then we have two options first of all we can use double lumen endotracheal tube and we can also use single lung ventilation to ventilate the non bleeding lung now locating the site of bleeding chest radiographs can be helpful but ct angiography is a investigation of choice and it is very important and tells accurate site of bleed other than that flexible bronchoscopy can also be done it has 50% chance of locating the site but it is not recommended in cystic fibrosis as it can cause 
delay in therapy and hence it is preferred to directly go with CT angiography. Now the third goal that is controlling the bleeding, it can be accomplished by one of the three ways. First of all, controlling the bleeding from airways, second is from involved blood vessel and third is surgical resection of both airways and blood vessel. For airways, we have got two options, flexible bronchoscope and other is rigid bronchoscope. The image here shows use of flexible bronchoscope. It is used for suctioning of the clot. So, for to insert uh, balloon catheter or bronchial blocker to occlude the involved airway. The other one is rigid bronchoscopy. The image shows here. It is uh, done by a pulmonologist or thoracic surgeon and it can use processes like photocoagulation and cautery to stop the bleeding. In blood vessel, we have option of bronchial artery embolization. As we already know, massive or life threatening hemoptysis can be due to involvement of bronchial circulation. Hence, bronchial artery embolization is a procedure of choice. The image here shows the same. The complication of this involves embolization of interspinal artery and uh, it has got more than 80% success rate to immediately stop bleeding. The last option is surgical resection. It is usually not recommended. It is uh, done if the initial measure fail and uh, bleeding persists. If the patient has a localized disease and uh, rest of the lung parenchyma is normal because it has got high mortality that is 15 to 40 percent. So that is it for the video guys. Uh, I hope you liked the video and uh, please share this video with uh, all your medical friend. I will see you in the next video from the next chapter from Harrison.